Ukraine's political elite had to squeeze through the police lines this morning towards a parliament protected by the riot squad. First, the national anthem. Ukraine has not yet died, sang the heavyweight. Some here fear it is heading that way. Today, though, a rare moment of unity. Gone were the unpopular anti-protest laws that provoked last week's violence. Gone, too, the Prime Minister who announced his government's resignation. Outside Parliament, the President's supporters said that should end it. I don't want these protests anymore, she told us. But down on the front lines, it wasn't enough. The President's whole handling of this affair is being widely questioned now, right across the country. And that's feeding into perceptions about his lack of leadership over the last few years in Ukraine. There is a deepening sense that this will only end when the President himself steps down. Trudging round the barricades, we found marketing manager Victoria, now tea lady for the revolution. What does she think would end this standoff? I think that the most important thing is that uh, Russia will go away from my country. Russia is the reason these protests started when, two months ago, Ukraine's president decided to distance his country from the European Union and strengthen ties with Moscow. In Brussels today, those two geopolitical forces fighting for influence in Ukraine came face to face. The EU sent its top foreign policy official to Kiev tonight. Russia's president suggested such visits aren't helpful. I'm not sure Ukraine needs intermediaries. If they do, they can ask for them. But I think the more intermediaries there are, the more problems there are. In the sub-zero of Kiev's independent square this evening, a game of chess. The protesters here believe they can topple the president and they have the patience to wait it out. This isn't over yet. Matthew Price, BBC News, Kiev.